Hi guys, welcome back to another Fraser Virtual Museum video. Uh, today we're going to highlight a really special artifact in our Founders Gallery. This is a part of our original American History collection. Uh, but most importantly, we're uploading new content every day. So if you enjoy this video, uh, join us again tomorrow and also check out our social media. So Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter for all of the latest updates. Now this artifact is really special because it belonged to a man named Geronimo. In the late 1800s, the US government was placing many Native American nations onto reservations after removing them from their homeland. Geronimo had been uh, chased through the desert by a group of 5,000 US troops. So he negotiated with the US government that they be granted sovereignty, meaning they had to be treated uh, the same way as any other country under international law. And he also negotiated, once he was captured, to be treated as a political prisoner. Now, later, uh, one of my favorite stories about Geronimo is when he had joined up with Buffalo Bill's Wild West show, and they were touring the entire country, and every town that they stopped at, uh, the group would get off the train, and by this time, Geronimo was a celebrity. So everyone was scrambling to get a hold of Geronimo, to shake his hand, uh, to hear his voice, people were really uh, captivated by who Geronimo was. He would take out his pocket knife, pop off a button, and sell it as a souvenir. And of course, when he got back on the train, he would sew on a new button and repeat the process. But with this money, he was able to send it back to the Apache and help his own people. We know that this belonged to Geronimo, but much like the souvenir story, we believe that this was probably one set of many that he sold as a souvenir um, over the course of his life as a public figure. The last thing I wanted to point out is Geronimo's painting created by an important artist named Elbridge Iyer Burbank. Um, this was the only artist that Geronimo sat for, although there are some staged photographs of him as well. Uh, but the Smithsonian has another copy. Um, Burbank was important because he created over 1,200 paintings over the course of his career uh, and sketches of men and women from about 125 different Native American nations. One of the things that I wanted to share with you is how to make your own Native American cuisine at home. Now, if you're Native American, I would love to hear your thoughts on this. Tell me what nation you're a part of and what recipes you like to share. These you can honor at home. They're really easy to make. And one of them is called wojapi. You can use or substitute any berries that you have in your freezer, blueberries, strawberries, or raspberries, for example you're going to blend that together. You can also mix it or mash it together in a bowl. Then you're going to heat that up in a pan, reduce it, watching it carefully to make sure that the berries don't burn. And you can add honey, sugar, or cornstarch to flavor and to thicken the berry sauce as well. It goes great on toast and it makes a really good breakfast. Next, we're gonna make Navajo coffee. Now, Navajo coffee is a result of survival on uh, the Navajo reservation at the time. And other nations also have a spin on this recipe too. So if you have a version that you like to make, please comment below. You're gonna take flour or even better, like a light cake flour. The lighter, the better, but you can try to use whatever you have in your pantry. Next, you're going to toast the flour. So on low to medium heat on a pan, you're gonna take a wooden spatula and gently stir that flour until it's toasted or golden brown, almost like a peanut butter color. Once it's nice and toasted without burning your flour, you're gonna set that aside and brew your coffee. Once your coffee is brewed, you can brew it as normal. Uh, you're gonna pour that into a mug and only fill it about halfway to three quarters of the way because you're gonna stir in all of the beautiful flour you just toasted. Continue spooning it in until it becomes very thick. The end result is going to be more like a pudding. This is in fact coffee that you eat with a spoon. And so you're going to slowly uh, spoon that flour into your coffee, stirring as you go until you get a nice creamy thickness. And you'll be also stirring in sugar to taste to get it to the sweetness that you prefer. I hope you enjoyed these recipes and uh, I hope you join us next time. We're uploading new content throughout the week. 
So from our Fraser family to yours, we'll see you virtually until we can see you in person. So thanks for watching. See you later.